This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. Our moon, which goes by the name of Luna, uh, has a number of distinguishing characteristics. Given that the moon has no atmosphere, no way to erode or weather or vulcanize the impacts, the moon's surface is covered with craters. In fact, the moon size-wise is about it's about a quarter the size of the Earth and about one one-hundredth the mass. You put those two things together and you get a gravity on the Moon of approximately one-sixth the gravity of the Earth. So when Apollo astronauts and Apollo 11 first visited the Moon in 1969, they had a gravitational pull of about one-sixth that we're used to on Earth, allowing them to feel uh, significantly less weighty than they would on Earth, although the spacesuits were pretty ungainly uh, and made it difficult to go around. In fact, that first landing on the Moon, which took place in 1969 with Apollo 11, was followed by Apollo 12, the failed trip to the Moon with Apollo 13 that Tom Hanks would be happy to tell you about in the movie Apollo 13, Apollo 14, 15, 16, and 17, six successful missions out of seven tries that finished off in December of 1972. So we learned a lot about the moon from the Apollo missions. In fact, the missions brought back some 800 plus pounds of moon rock. And like I said, the craters were the dominant uh, geologic activity. In fact, the moon's surface is covered with a fine layer of dust, a couple, uh, a couple kilometers, a couple centimeters thick, okay? Probably about an inch. Uh, and that dust is created by impacts. In fact, there's a name for that dust. It's called the lunar regolith. In fact, if we look at pictures of the surface of the moon, we note that the moon has both uh, sort of circular, sort of darker regions, and then these lighter colored intermediary regions. These smoother, darker regions are called mare, which is Latin for sea. Back in the old days, they thought these, in fact, were oceans. They realized that the moon had no atmosphere in conditions that couldn't uh, allow for liquid water. In fact, the, the lack of an atmosphere means that the daytime temperatures on the moon are in excess of 100 degrees Celsius hot enough to boil water, yet when night sets on the moon, as it does after about two weeks, lunar day is about, about a month, so about two weeks in we get darkness, temperatures plummet to minus 200 degrees Celsius, so the, the moon temperature variations are extreme due to the lack of the atmosphere, from 100 degrees Celsius in the day to negative 200 degrees. When we look at the surface of the moon, we see these smooth mare and the other regions in between are heavily cratered. Those are known as the lunar highlands. The presence of large number of craters on the highlands tells us that that surface has been exposed to the elements, if you will, a lot longer time. In fact, it's an older surface. The lunar highlands are anywhere from 4.1 to 4.5 billion years old older than almost any surface on the young and active Earth's surface. The lunar highlands, uh, we brought back rocks from there, 4.1 to 4.5 billion years old. The presence of lots of craters suggests to us that it's been exposed to the elements for a long time. The same is not true for the Mare. Interestingly enough, the Mare have very few craters. Now, given that there's no wind, there's no water on the moon, what could be re-smoothing the surface? The Mare, it turns out, are ancient impact craters. They are only 3.1 to 3.8 billion years old. Now, that's still old for the Earth, but on the moon, that's pretty young. So the Mare are 3.1 to 3.8 billion years old. The thinking here is that when the early moon is hit by impactors, the crust is thin, 
there is a punch a hole in that crust and lava wells up and forms these mare, resurfacing the moon and creating these conditions 3.1 to 3.8 billion years ago. Intriguingly, the far side of the moon, the side of the moon that we cannot see because the moon always keeps the same face facing us, it is tidally locked, keeps the same face facing the earth through the gravitational pull of the earth. That tidal lock leads to the moon's core being offset. And so the moon's core doesn't sit at the middle, it actually sits off-center. It sits closer to the earth's side. And so the core being offset leads to a thinning of the near side crust. Because that's the hottest place in the moon. And a thickening of the far side crust making it virtually impossible for the far side to have any mare. So we see virtually no mare on the so-called far side of the moon, the side that never faces the Earth. Again, because the moon is gravitationally bound to the Earth, as it goes around the Earth, it keeps the same face facing the Earth, creating a situation where the side that never faces the Earth the core is offset towards the earth, thickening that crust and creating a lack of mare on the far side. That brings us to our last point about the moon, and that is its formation. We mentioned earlier that the moon's average density is 3,300, implying that the core is quite small. In fact, the moon is iron deficient. Interestingly enough, the moon also has very similar composition to the rocks found on the Earth. The prevailing wisdom is that early in the Earth's history, when the iron had already sunk to the center, the Earth was struck by a large impactor. That impactor blasted bits of iron poor material off the early Earth, which later coalesced to form the moon. That moon formed in the presence of the Earth and was therefore geologically bound to the Earth, creating that tidal lock that we talked about earlier and creating a moon that formed as the result of an impact and the ejection of material into space. What we'll do in our tour of the solar system next is to talk briefly about the planets Mercury, Venus, and Mars. They all have in common that they are small terrestrial objects in close to the Sun. And then our tour will bring us to the outer solar system, to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune.